Good afternoon and welcome to the webinar. I'm Sasha Fedorenko, staff writer of Timebird.com, and I'd like to introduce you to today's webinar, The Future of Marketplaces, Search, Virtual Assistance and Artificial Intelligence. At the end of today's webinar, we will move into the Q&A session. So ahead of that, let me explain you how to ask any questions you may have. On the control panel on your screen, you'll see a chat box. Write your question in your box and press send and we'll answer as many questions as we can today. The session is recorded. So let me, let me remind you that after the webinar finishes, we'll be sending out an email with a link so you can watch it again whenever it is convenient. Without any further ceremony, it is my pleasure to introduce my colleague, Chris Dawson, editor and co-founder of Tembe. Good afternoon, everyone. Over the next 45 minutes, we'll be discussing the latest developments in virtual assistance, artificial intelligence, search updates, eBay, Etsy, Amazon, marketplace bait search, protecting your business. Technology is changing with the speed of customers' expectations. With introduction smart devices, artificial intelligence, and machine learning, the way search works both on and off marketplaces is changing to fit within customers' lifestyles. Merchants need to be well informed on how to leverage the technology to deliver on their customers' expectations. As an online merchant, your goal is to be visible both at home and international markets. In this webinar, we will look at the leading UK marketplaces and search engines so that sellers can take advantage to succeed. So the first thing we're going to look at today are virtual assistants. As well as um, devices like um, bikes, um, virtual assistants are being built into things like home appliances, like dishwashers. Amazon have ex experimented with some very, very basic um, virtual assistants, which they call Amazon Dash Buttons. But since then, um, uh, manufacturers have actually started building the technology into the devices them themselves. So Sasha, do you have a virtual assistant yourself? And what do you use it for? I'm just uh, sending a message to you and that's it. And that's what a lot of people are actually using virtual assistants for, to be honest. Um, I've got a Amazon Fire TV stick, which has got Alexa built in. And because I've got some smart home devices, it's actually fantastic. I can use my effectively my TV remote control now and speak to Alexa and turn on my heating or turn on my kettle or turn on my lights. Um, so virtual assistants are going to start getting more and more in, 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 into our lives. Um, but the important question everyone's asking is, are people buying on virtual assistants yet? Um, are they being used for commerce? Um, now, Loop Ventures did some very interesting research where they looked at uh, different categories um, to uh, check usage and not just usage, but how effective the different virtual assistants were. So you can see um, Google have done really well on things like local search, like what time does Sainsbury's open today or what time what times the cinema are open. Um, commerce, surprisingly, you might have expected Amazon Echo to do really, really well here, but actually Google Home is a lot better for commerce than Amazon Echo. Um, some of these stats are based around the States where obviously we've got Google Shopping. Google Shopping hasn't really taken off in the UK yet, um, but it has recently launched in France. Um, and this should be a guide that um, even though Echo is so closely tied to Amazon and people naturally buy on Amazon, 
Um, people are buying an awful lot on the other virtual assistants like Google Home. And they're not generally doing product research. It's generally um, Google, order me more batteries or Alexa, order more kitchen roll. It's, it's, they're, they're, they're ordering commodities that they probably ordered before and it's mainly repeat orders. Navigation, as you'd expect, Google is, is, is way out in front. And being a search engine as well, um, Google does really, really well on search. Surprisingly, the Apple Home HomePod does really, really well on commands. And that can be a command like add a reminder in my diary or um, send a message. And the reason that Apple does well here is because they've got a bit of a cheat with the HomePod that the HomePod itself doesn't actually handle the request. What it does is it passes off to your Apple device, maybe your iPhone or your iPad, which is already heavily integrated with your calendar and your diary and your email, etc. So it find, the, the Apple device finds it really, really easy to re react with commands. But I think the most interesting one here is the commerce one. Um, where Google is, is, is streets ahead of the others. So watch out for this um, when Google um, shopping comes to the UK. Now, all of these devices are running on artificial intelligence. And all artificial intelligence really is, it, it just means there's a computer doing stuff for you. Um, but the computers um, learn and almost program themselves. And we all use artificial intelligence, if you're out in your car and you've got a sat nav running, um, you don't have to program a route in. You just program in an endpoint and tell it to start from wherever you are, and the map will automatically go out and it'll find the best route for you. But it doesn't just generally find you a route nowadays. If, for example, um, there's an accident ahead, <clears throat> programs like Google Maps will often find an alternative route and you don't have to ask it for an alternative route. It realizes that there's traffic congestion and says, okay, we've got a faster route for you. Do you want to go a different way instead? And artificial intelligence <coughs> is, is getting into all areas of our lives. Um, people use the phrase big data. Um, all big data is, is lots and lots and lots of little bits of data, but the artificial intelligence uses this data to crunch it and give out some meaningful information and results. And that's no, no more so than in e-commerce. If you think about traditional shopping, you, you walk into a high street retailer, you pick up a couple of products, you maybe put one back on the shelf, you go, you pay, and you walk out. And in most instances, all the retailer knows about you is your credit card number, and they don't really even have access to that. They just know that you someone bought something. Now, online, we know so much more. We know your email address we can contact you again. We know your physical address because we ship the product to you. We may know your age or sex or size, and um, depending on the type of product you've bought. We almost certainly know where you came from before you got to our site, what the source site was you clicked on to find our website. And you may also know which sites we visited from the exit pages. Crucially, we know what products you looked at before you selected one to put in your cart. So we can look at the journey through the website, whether it be on the marketplace, or the marketplaces have information to that, and there's limited stats um, on eBay and practically none on Amazon um, for that. Um, but the marketplaces know, so they can make product recommendations. Um, but we also know if you abandoned your cart on our website, um, and we may be able to deduce why you abandoned the cart. Maybe it was unexpected shipping charges, or maybe, we don't accept Apple Pay or PayPal or Amazon Pay, so you didn't have your credit card with you. And online retailers also know a lot about what happens to a, re a customer after the purchase because they leave reviews or on marketplaces it would, would be possibly feedback as well as a review and potentially social interactions on Twitter or Facebook um, or even something like TripAdvisor if someone's, someone's been to your outlet and that had a good experience. So there's tons and tons of data that's all coming in and all of this data can be used. But what we're going to look at today is not so much um, what tools you can use for the data, but how to actually capture people in the first place when they come to your site. So for the next couple of minutes, we're going to be looking at search across marketplaces and the web in general. And 
the first thing I, I, I really want to emphasize is how image search works and how it's changed over the years. Marketplaces have been telling us for years we want nice, clean, clear pictures. Um, but in the original type of image search, what the image actually looked like was largely irrelevant. Um, it, it needed obviously to be attractive to the consumer so they could see what the image was. Um, but it didn't matter if it was on a cluttered background or a clear background because humans can quite easily interpret an image. So the way image search worked was um, things like the file name, well, the, the, give, rather than giving it DSF 0012 because that was the file name your camera ascribed it, you, you, you would actually name the image to be relevant to what was actually in the picture. Alt tags were important and captions were important. And when, people searched on the internet for images, these were the only things that the that, that search engines could use um, to actually know what was in the image. In later days, search engines got more intelligent and they started to use the text around the image um, to actually give them clues of what the image was about. So in this example, it's talking about a long sleeve shirt and it, it, it's got some product details and it's got, got a whole load of information about what is probably in that image. So search engines like Google can start making some assumptions about what is actually in the image and use that to surface image search. But that was kind of the second stage of searching for images. And we've now moved into a world of image recognition. And this is where um, search engines, whether it be on eBay or Google or Bing, are starting to look at the image and actually analyze the image themselves. So here we, 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 we've got a picture of a shirt and it's on a nice clean background, which everyone from eBay to Google tells us they want. But actually, although that is a lovely, clean, crisp image, it's a really, really bad image for image search. If we look at the um, first page of um, Google results, you'll see that none of these shirts are folded. And this is not an image I've made up. This is literally a screenshot of the first page of Google search results. Um, I just searched for shirt. And you see along the top, um, Google have immediately inserted a whole load of results from uh, Google Shopping. So um, it, it's, it's really important that you understand how the images work because Google will not put your images into Google Shopping if they don't think they're a sufficient standard. But the important thing with all these shirts, some are on models, some are just laid flat, um, some are on dummies. But in all instances, you can instantly see, is it a long sleeve shirt or a short sleeve shirt? Has it got different color cuffs? Um, is it a long shirt, a, a, a short shirt? What sort of color has it got? And Google and other search engines and eBay, all of the search engines need you to think about not just having a great product image on a clean background so they can identify the item. They also need you to think about how you display the product. Google can't tell from a folded shirt if it's a long sleeve or a short sleeve shirt. Um, and that's really important because if I put in a search for, I want a blue long sleeve shirt, Google needs to be able to identify from that image that it's got a long, long sleeves on the shirt and then it can in, it compare it with other similar images. Um, so no matter what product you're selling, um, think about how you're gonna display it and it may mean for example, if you're selling something in a blister pack, say a mouse or something, that you actually take the mouse out of the blister pack to take the, take the photo so that it's very, very clear what the image is. And also, Im obviously, images from mul multiple sides. Um, whatever products you're selling, though, I would highly recommend you go to Google and just do generic image search for the products you're selling and then uh, um, have a look and see the type of results that Google wants to show. And that gives you a very, very strong uh, idea of what type of image shots you, sh you, you should be taking. Um, because if Google doesn't like folded shirts, there's no point you having folded shirts on your, on, on your e-commerce sites. And, and the reason for that is obviously 
here's the shopping results across the top. There are no folded shirts. Um, let's take our lead from Google. The other thing, by the way, is you'll notice on none of these images um, on the first page of Google, are there any text decorations or borders or Union Jack flags because you ship from the UK? Google loves really crisp, clean images. And so do the marketplaces, incidentally, although on eBay, they're, they're, they're a little bit lax, but Amazon won't be having anything other than clean, crisp images. So when you're, when you're taking your, 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 your product shots, think about search and think about <clears throat> what are the search engines going to be looking for? What type of images do they display first? And make sure your images are along similar lines. The other thing that's really important in search is structured data. And anyone that sells on eBay um, is probably fed up to the back teeth with structured data because eBay keep um, insisting on more and more item specifics, et cetera. But search engines love them. And you'll see for this particular manufacturer of this retailer's website, over on the side, they've actually got a, a, a box out section um, with drop down so that you can change the size, the color, the quantity, et cetera. And this type of structured data, search engines absolutely love um, because they can see the attributes and it gives them a lot, uh, many, many more clues about what type of product um, we're actually looking at. So anything, it, 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 rather than, for instance, um, writing a block text paragraph describing the shirt, Think about, at the very least, putting the attributes for the product in as bullet points so that search engines see it as a list and can actually interpret that. And all of the search engines and, and, and marketplaces say that um, this product data is really, really important. eBay have released a, a ton of stats recently. They made some changes to item specifics in uh, women's fashion and specifically dresses, tops and shirts. And they, they, they released some data on how much better um, conversion rates are on products where these item specifics have been completed. Um, I, uh, eBay made a, a pretty bad job the first time around last year of releasing item specifics. They didn't make it very easy. Um, but in the, the latest update, they, they've at least made it so that your good to cancelled listings will, will carry on renewing, even if you've not updated the item specifics. But when you see stats um, like selling 81% better with certain item specifics than without, it should give you a really, really good clue that even if you don't have to update your item specifics because it's not been mandated, it makes sense uh, that, that, that you, you, you do so. And which item specifics are the most important then? So I, th this is a, a, a eBay search for dresses, and I, I've just taken the item specifics and, and uh, chopped it up so they fit on the screen. But the first one that shows is the size. So size is crucial. Um, but then eBay have got a relatively new item specific for dresses, which is occasion. Um, so if you think it's a casual dress or a party dress, really important to, to click that. And dress length as well, um, mini, midi, long, knee length and, and, and style. But as you go down the list, you'll see that although eBay insists on the brand item specific, eBay don't actually consider that quite as important because you have to click see all before you see the, the, the brand. And the same for things like the color and the material. Obviously, it's really important to complete these item specifics because eBay will actually use them in search. If someone searched for a black dress and you've not ticked the black item specific, um, then uh, you, you, your dress is not going to be found. <clears throat> um, but what else is important is you'll see here um, when you click the see all um, that actually only four of the item specifics display on eBay. There's another one here, which is work which has only got almost 700 um, addresses, which is negligible in comparison to the size of the category. But importantly, um, 1.3 million dresses on eBay have no item specific for occasion completed. Now, there's 1.7 million casual, 390,000. There's, there's, there's about 2 million other dresses in this search um, where the item specifics are um, completed. So roughly a third of people's um, dresses are not going to get found on eBay if someone clicks 
an occasion. It doesn't matter if, they, if, if you're selling, obviously, a work dress or a party dress and someone clicks casual, you're, you, you're, you're going to be excluded from search anyway. Um, but if you've not ticked one of those item specifics, um, then as soon as someone chooses one, your product is going to be excluded from search. Now, this is really, really critical on marketplaces um, because it is the structured data that the marketplace uses to drive search. So the more of the item specifics you, 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 you complete, the better. And as I say, even if eBay introduces new ones and make them sort of semi-optional, um, mandatory for new listings, but optional for old listings, it's really important to go through and update your old listings um, to get these item specifics included. Now, I'd like to just touch on mobile search a little. Um, interestingly, mobile search has now overtaken the number of uh, shopping visits from people that actually visit a shopping center. Um, apparently, 56% of us will visit a shopping center in, in, in 2019, uh, but 58% of us will shop on smartphones. So, Mobile is absolutely critical, whether it be your marketplace listings or your own website. Um, marketplaces will generally do a pretty good job of displaying your listings on mobile anyway. But there are a couple of things that you can do, especially on eBay, um, to actually capture the, the, these mobile visitors and make sure it's easy for them to buy from you. And one of these is something that's been out a, a, a while on eBay, which is eBay mobile descriptions, but it's surprising how many people still don't complete them. So on the mobile description, um, this is a screenshot from my mobile phone, and it has an item description and uh, four or five lines of text there. Um, I'm not saying in this particular instance, I think the text is great, but at least I've got some information there about the product. If you've not got that item description filled in, eBay will try and auto fill it for you, which is what I think has happened in this case. Um, <clears throat> but failing that, if you've got a rich HTML description and eBay can't figure out where the item description is, it will be blank. And buyers will then only see this information on your product if they actually click the, the item description box to see the full item description. Um, this has been a, a, available on eBay, as I say, for a, quite a while, over a year now. But it's critical that you actually specify the mobile description yourself. It will give you a huge boost on eBay on, um, on, on, on mobile. Something else that's relatively new, which isn't specific to mobile, but works really, really well on mobile, is eBay multi-buy listings. Um, this is eBay giving the... Um, ability for you to discount a product if someone wants to buy two of an item or three of an item. It only works on a, a specific product on a specific listing. So it, it's not um, sort of a shopping basket dis discount. eBay have got other tools for shopping basket discounts. But where it does work really, really well is if you offer free post. And the reason for that is very often, especially for lightweight products, if you're shipping something out as a large letter, you could probably put two of an item in the same large letter and the postage wouldn't cost you any more. So what it looks like on mobile is um, buy one at 675, but buy two at 668 and um, th there's options for buying three, three, four or more. Um, and you get a little bit of a discount for each product. Now, in this case, the, the discount isn't huge, um, but then it's a, it's a very, very low cost product. But as I say, if you're actually offering free post and say on the, the, the first product you built in two pounds for postage, so that would make a 675 product would then be 475 plus two pound postage. Then if someone buys two, if they'll still fit in the same way, then you can actually offer a two pound discount on the second item. You may not want to offer a two pound discount. You may offer 50p, 30p a pound, or in, in, in this case, they, 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 they only offered sort of 7p, um, which is hardly worth has worthwhile doing the discount. But look at your free post items. Um, not so much on things like clothing, where people are probably only going to buy one anyway, but on products where people could quite conceivably buy multiples. Um, if you've got some margin in your postage, then definitely set up the multiply discounts um, to encourage people to 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 buy more. Obviously, the, the bigger the basket size, um, the, the the more margins you're likely to make on a per order basis. 
Now, I'd like to just turn to Etsy search. Um, I know a lot of our readers sell on Etsy, and they've recently updated their, 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 their search, and there's a couple of really interesting things here. Um, obviously, relevancy um, in search is hyper important. Is your, is, your, is your title the product that the, 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 the buyer is looking for, and do the attributes match their search criteria? But similarly to eBay, Etsy also have a listing quality um, measure in, in their search results and the way they order them. And Etsy look at conversion rates, or in eBay terms, we'd probably call this recent sales. And the more of a listing that you sell, the, 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 the higher it converts, the higher in search Etsy will actually put your listing. Something else that's really interesting on Etsy is recency. Etsy like new listings and they want to give them a chance to succeed. So if you've list a new if you have a new listing on Etsy, it gets a temporary boost in search results for a short period of time. What this may well mean is if you've got listings on Etsy which haven't sold for a month, two months, three months, six months, it may well be worth ending those listings giving them a quick revise and making sure they're up to date and as good as they can be and relisting them to take advantage of that temporary boost. Something else that Etsy do, um, which we don't really see on other marketplaces, is they also look at how experienced the seller is and how well they display that experience. So reviews obviously are critical, um, but you're reliant on users leaving your reviews. But Etsy actually looked to see if you completed your shop policies and your About Me page. And they can actually give all of your products a boost in search. So on Etsy, if you've not got full shop policies and you, you, you've not completed your About Me page, make sure you do that because that can give your overall listings a boost. And finally, the big one, Etsy have now giving a boost in search for free shipping. And they, they've had quite a push on this um, in, in recent months um, to encourage sellers to list with free shipping. Now, I know all the arguments for sh free shipping. There is no such thing as free shipping. It, it's, it's effectively included in the item cost. Um, sometimes for some products, it's just uneconomical to offer free shipping. Um, on other products where people are making multiple purchases, even the buyers would prefer to pay a, a flat shipping fee rather than having it included in the cost of every item. But it's important to remember on Etsy um, that there is this free shipping. And if, if you can offer free shipping, you'll get a boost in search. And the other thing on Etsy is they've recently updated the way um, that personalization works. Um, Across marketplaces, um, Amazon have got personalization on, on, on certain categories and it works relatively okay. eBay just don't have personalization built in at all. Um, but Etsy's personalization is actually pretty good now. Right at the point of buying, um, you, you, you can enter whether it be you, you, your name or um, text or images. Um, that you'd like included on these products. Um, so make sure that rather than relying on buyers sending you a message after the event, that if, you, if you're on Etsy, you make use of their new personalization tools. So it would be hard not to mention eBay's product-based shopping experience or the eBay catalog um, and eBay's push to update their marketplace. Um, basically what they're, they're looking to do is to compress listings so that if they've got 100 listings for an iPhone, um, they compress them all down to a single listing. Um, and then with some options so that you can choose what color iPhone you want, what network you want, how much memory it's got. And you, you can choose um, whether you want to buy a refurbished item or a brand new item or a, whether it be a manufacturer refurbished or, or, or retailer refurbished eBay made a big thing about rolling out their product-based shopping experience in the, 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 the in the last couple of years, but they actually um, pulled back a little bit on it towards the end of last year, and kind of delayed the rollout. And because eBay have discovered a problem, new buyers to eBay, perhaps buyers that are used to buy on sites like Amazon, actually love this new product-based shopping experience. They don't want to route through 100, 200 listings for the same item trying to find the best deal. Um, they, 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 they almost want to be told what the best deal is and maybe then consider some other options like if it looks a bit expensive, 
um, uh, choosing one with a, 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 a smaller memory or perhaps a refurbished one. The problem is existing buyers on eBay don't actually like this new experience. And it, 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 it's a problem for eBay because they've got to try and move the marketplace forward by attracting new buyers without alienating their old buyers. And in fact, the situation's got so, so, so critical that news broke um, overnight that one of eBay's investors have written to eBay and said uh, basically that the marketplace isn't accelerating fast enough, it's not making as much profit as it should be, and it's pretty much failing to compete with competitors like Amazon. Um, so what will come of that, I don't know. Um, the, the, the investors have suggested that eBay sell off some um, some uh, uh, some of their um, products such as Gumtree and Kijiji and their, their eBay classifieds and sell off StubHub and then totally refocus on the marketplace and, and give it a real kickstart. Um, and, and, and this is one of the areas that obviously eBay have been working on for a number of years. It's worked to an extent, it's not worked perfectly. So we don't know quite where this is going to go, um, one to watch for, for the future this year. Um, so it's based on the eBay catalog and what it does mean is eBay have asked in a lot of categories that when you list that you actually match your products to the eBay catalog so that they can compress the listings and roll them up. Essentially, if you fail to list against the eBay catalog in one of the categories where the product-based shopping experience is live, your product simply won't be seen. Um, Information that the, the rollout of this, as I say, has been dialed back a bit, and we we'll expect to hear more in eBay's first seller release of 2019. Um, we don't know the date, but as a guideline, last year it was the 27th of February 2018. So we'd expect to hear more, and there there probably to be a seller release um, some sometime, sometime towards the end of February this year, when when we should start knowing more. Now. A big area over the last year and a half has been marketplace page search. This is where having paid your listing fee and your final value fee, um, you can then pay the marketplace even more money to boost your position in listings and get you better exposure. Um, the, 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 the pros are pretty obvious. Um, you're likely to get more sales. Um, but on the downside, you'll also be paying more in fees. And it also makes it much harder to compete with um, sellers that are perhaps not as good as you because even if they've got poor feedback or overpriced offers or they're shipping from china and it's going to take 18 days to arrive they can simply buy exposure with paid search now ebay when they started off they they started putting um the 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 promoted listings in in search results but in the last couple of months we've seen a change in the position that they display them and currently on ebay we're seeing eBay displaying promoted listings in the first, fourth, and fifth search positions. Now, this is really critical because it means in the old days on eBay, if you had the best product at the best price that regularly sold, say you had high recent listings, you could get right to the top of best match and be in position one. Today, you cannot be in position one because you've got a great product and you're a great seller. I, you could offer eBay pr premium service, you could offer free post, great pictures, great price. You could be selling 100 a day and the highest you would ever get in search results is position two because position one has been taken by someone that simply bought their way to the top. And it's really interesting this search I did for a, a, a Lenovo laptop uh, charger because actually the person who is second in natural search results has paid their way to jump to the top of search results. So in, in this example, the first and the third listing are actually identical products, identical price. It's the same product from the same seller. Something that we're seeing a lot of sellers having to do is to keep the competition off the top spot in search results on eBay is to simply outbid them. And this is a, a, a doubly bad thing because often, as in this instance, they, they've got the top search result and the third search result, often they'll have the top and the second search result. And the only reason they're paying for the top search result is to stop someone else getting that position. But often when a buyer comes to eBay, if they look at the top search result, and it won't have the red box which I've drawn around it, it'll just have a very tiny print sponsored, then they'll buy the top search result 
they won't buy in this instance from the, the third listing, they'll buy from the top listing. And every time they buy from the top listing, that seller then has to pay the eBay promoted listings fee percentage that they, that they bid for on that listing. So they're ending up um, having to buy their way to the top to keep other people out and then pay more in fees, even if they're already relatively high in, in search results. Um, but the one thing that I can tell you is eBay promoted listings are working really, really well. So you need to experiment um, with, with giving away some margin to get that top position, because the one thing we can guarantee you is if you don't, someone else will, and you will never get to the top of search results on eBay again. The best you'll ever get to is positions two and three, because position one is from someone that's actually bought that position. Um, Amazon advertising is, is, is very similar, except they have a few more options. They've got um, sponsored brands at the top, then they've got sponsored products. Um, they'll often have an Amazon choice or an Amazon recommended, um, and maybe some Amazon owned brands in the mix as well. Um, and again, it's the, the, if, if the product that the consumer is interested in happens to be one of those sponsored products in the just below the sponsored brands, there's a pretty good chance that they could end up buying that. And on Amazon, 90% of the time, organic search results listings don't even appear above the fold. You have to actually scroll in your browser to see organic listings. The sponsored listings are the ones that show up first. Now on Amazon advertising, and in fact, if you go to Tame Bay today, you'll, you'll find a post where we've set out all of the Amazon advertising options. But the main ones to consider are Amazon sponsored products where you, 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 you list a product and then you, you pay additionally to have it in the sponsored products area. Amazon sponsored brands are for naturally for brands and they'll have their logo up to three products and they can put a little bit of text in as well and that appears right at the top of search results. And then there's also product display ads which are slightly different. These are ads which um, may or may not link to Amazon listings. They may at times actually link to off Amazon websites because you, you can actually advertise on Amazon um, for a product on your own website and just as easily as you can ad advertise on Amazon for a product that is on Amazon. And it's also in key that you actually consider registering for Amazon's brand registry. Um, Amazon's brand registry gives you a little bit of protection around you, 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 your trademark and enables you to, to add more rich information on, 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 onto Amazon. And definitely, if you want to make use of things like Amazon sponsored brands, um, then you, will, you definitely need to be in the brand registry. Now, I'd like to move on a little bit. Um, to talk about how to protect your business in 2019. So one thing that's happening on Amazon is Amazon are opening up more and more of their own private label products. Um, Amazon have had Amazon fine, fine fashion for uh, uh, almost two years now. Um, they started off with about 700 products and today they've got about 2000 fashion products. But just this this month, Amazon have also just launched Find Beauty, and they've also launched a new range of pet food on Amazon. So these are Amazon private label brands. Um, they actually have about 100, 130 odd private label brands on Amazon, where they get manufacturers to um, brand products. Excuse me. They get Amazon to actually uh, manufacturers to to make products and actually brand them. In this case, I'm showing Amazon branded batteries, Amazon Basics batteries. Um, but Amazon also have what they call exclusive brands, which are products that other manufacturers make under their own name, but exclusively sell them on Amazon. Now, this is adding a hell of a lot of competition um, because I say even just one brand, Amazon Find, um, they've got 2,000 different garments, obviously in a range of sizes and colors. Um, and Amazon are, are promoting them heavily. You can see here with the batteries, um, whenever it's one of Amazon's own brands or an exclusive brand, they always put our brand at the bottom and promote them heavily on the site. Something else that you'll find is an enormous number of Chinese brands are branding themselves to look like a regular UK brand. The only real defense about against this is to build your own brand and build a brand story 
Um, look for reviews and endorsements both on and off Amazon across the web and on social media and build your own brand. I believe that the time is, is not too far away on Amazon where it becomes almost impossible to trade as what I would call a box shifter. That is someone that um, buys a product, sells it on for a margin, but doesn't really add value in the middle. The, 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 there's still space at the moment, but the space is shrinking. And even in the mundane things, as we've seen, um, batteries, Amazon are, are, are building their own brand for batteries. How are you going to compete against Amazon when Amazon heavily promote their own brand? And incidentally, Amazon themselves with their own products make heavy use of Amazon sponsored products um, and, and, and as sponsored brands um, to get their own products to the top of search. So especially if you are operating by buying from a Chinese manufacturer, getting it shipped across to the UK or the Europe, and then listing products on Amazon, you're going to find the competition there increasingly tough because we know at a recent event um, back in December, Amazon had 10,000 of what they call quality Chinese um, merchants at their, their, their event in person. And they had about another 30,000 Chinese merchants actually um, dial into the event over the internet. So 40 odd thousand Chinese merchants. These merchants are all sat next door to the factories. So they can almost do back to back ordering or even drop shipping um, to the UK. So to compete with them, it's really tough for you to order Chinese products, get them shipped to the UK and then sell them when there's a Chinese retailer next to the factory doing exactly the same thing. Now, most Chinese factories, etc., will quite happily customized products. Um, th this Chinese brand that we wrote about last year, Grace Karen, um, lovely na English name Grace. Karen is a bit sort of Gaelic Irish. Um, they're, they're trying to look like a British brand. They're not making any attempt to disguise the fact they're Chinese. They're just setting out their products to appeal to the UK audience. Um, but with that brand story behind, um, you can't go out and sell Grace Karen dresses because that's obviously their brand and you need to build your own brand even if it is relatively mundane products and, and you could source the same dresses from the same Chinese manufacturer, but simply ask them to stitch your brand label in, 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 in the neck rather than, than, than the Chinese brand's label. So at this point, um, I'd like to open up if anyone's got any questions. Um, thanks, thanks for attending today. Um, if, if, if you've got any questions, please feel free to type them into the question box. Um, and um, if not, you can always contact um, Sasha or myself via email. Okay, it doesn't, doesn't look like we've got any questions at the moment. So the, the one thing that we've not discovered, discussed today is um, Brexit. And I would love to... Um, uh, be, be, be able to give some advice on Brexit. Um, but the, the truth of it is we don't actually know what's going to happen with Brexit over the next few months. Um, the default position is that we crash out of the UK, um, uh, sorry, crash out of Europe without a deal. Um, none of the MPs seem to be in favour of that. So whether um, we get an extension to Article 50 or whether um, we, we, we actually get some sort of deal put together. Um, currently, we don't know. Um, the, the best advice we can currently give you is to stockpile stock as much as you can at the moment, and also consider stockpiling it in Europe, even if it's in Amazon FBA, because we don't know what the duty and the, um, the, the VAT situation will be after then. So I think we've got a couple of questions coming in, Sasha. Okay, so the first question is, um, roughly what's the split now between eBay and Amazon? And the answer to that is that um, Amazon is growing much faster than eBay. Um, if it had been a few years back, I would have said that you should roughly expect, if you're already selling on eBay and you started selling on Amazon, that um, you would expect your business to double, so you'd sell roughly 50% on each. 
what I'm hearing from a lot of sellers at the moment is that the split is much more sort of 70 to 80 percent on Amazon and only 20 to 30 percent on eBay. So that 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 has changed a little bit. Um, as I said with the in in the presentation, with the um, uh, investors um, looking at eBay, we're, we're, we're not really sure um, what, what, what's going to happen there. Um, but I certainly wouldn't rule eBay out as, as, as dead. There are a lot of loyal eBay, e eBay users, um, but I think Amazon is where merchants are seeing faster growth. Chris, we've all actually got another question. So here it is. As a UK seller with UK stock, will Brexit be good for business? Uh, will Brexit be good for business? I think the, the, the answer to that is probably Brexit will be bad for business for everyone, at least in the short term. Now, as a UK seller selling to the UK, you may well find that in the short term, you get a lot more UK customers buying from you because they, and it, this really depends what shape Brexit is. But for example, if we were buying from Germany, and we then had to pay um, import duties, that would make um, goods from German sellers look more expensive. And even worse, um, often when goods are imported and there's VAT and duty to pay, um, the courier will actually make a charge, normally about 10, 11, 12 pounds, um, for collecting the VAT and duty. They call it a disbursement fee. So I recently bought something from the States and then I got a bill for £116 for duty and VAT. But on top of that was £11.50 disbursement fee, which um, in this case UPS took just for processing the paperwork and taking the money and handing it over to HMRC. So um, as a, Brexit may well um, discourage a lot of UK consumers from buying from Europe. But on the other hand, the situation will be re could be reversed if we have tariffs for UK sellers selling to Europe. So it could it could impact your 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 business to Europe quite significantly. We've got another question on Google search. Um, hi, I've heard Google will only show results with the same content from a single website. Therefore, products with the same content from different marketplaces will get omitted from the same results. Is this true? Yes. Um, Google are like any search engine. Um, <clears throat> they want to show um, the, the best products at the best prices, if it's Google Shopping or in natural search results, just the best products or the most relevant. What they don't want to do is show the same product from the same retailer five times because they've got it on their website, they've got it on eBay, they've got it on Amazon, they've got it on Etsy, and they've got it on Facebook. So Google won't generally um, show, you, show, show you the same product multiple times. Um, Google also, um, a few years back, stopped merchants on marketplaces from sending their own marketplace feed to Google. And the reason for that, again, is um, if multiple merchants were selling the same product on the same marketplace, Google only wanted to show what the probably the best offer was from that marketplace. So you can't now set up a, a Google merchant feed from your marketplace listings. You have to rely on the marketplace, whether that be eBay, Amazon, or whoever, um, to, to set up the, 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 the feed for you. I guess that's it from um, listeners. We don't have any more questions. OK, well, I'd like to thank everyone um, for attending the webinar today. and. We did have one person ask um, when the, the, the webinar replay will be available, and that will be emailed. We'll, you, we'll get a link emailed to you very shortly after the webinar is finished. Um, but if you've still got your login invitation, you'll, you'll be able to use that invitation to log on and um, re re review the webinar right from the start. So thank you, everyone, for your, 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 your time today. And uh, we, we look forward to catching you soon. Thank you very much. Bye.